They say a great lady should always make a grand entrance, and this morning Mallard had her mostly male audience totally captivated. The 1930s icon still holds the record as the fastest steam locomotive in the world, set exactly 75 years ago today. To mark the occasion, all six of the surviving Class A4 engines have been brought together for two weeks at the National Railway Museum in York. Mallard, Bitten, Dominion of Canada, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Union of South Africa, and Sir Nigel Gresley, named after its Derbyshire designer, whose Shropshire-based grandson looked on this morning with pride. We had a wonderful relationship, as one can remember. I enjoyed the ducks that he took me down to see on the river, which he kept and named Mallard and other of his locomotives after them. This is Bitten, filmed recently for an upcoming DVD documentary celebrating the Class A4s. Bitten is doing a staggering 90 miles an hour here, but Mallard's record was another 36 miles an hour on top of that. It was achieved on a bright Sunday morning in the fields of Lincolnshire. A section of the East Coast Main Line was chosen, running south between Grantham and Peterborough. Stoking the boiler was fireman Tommy Bray, driving 62-year-old Joe Duddington, with Inspector Sid Jenkins also on the footplate. Mallard began just north of Grantham and cruised through the station there at a mere 24 miles an hour. But just five and a half miles later, she was already up to 75. As she thundered between the villages of Little Bytham and Essendine, the loco was into treble figures, 100, 110, 120, until finally, for just a few seconds, at milepost 90 and a quarter on Stoke Bank, Mallard reached 125.88 miles an hour, call it 126, the fastest ever speed achieved by a steam locomotive. As she roared past, Mallard's six foot eight inch wheels were turning at the rate of 500 revolutions a minute. In fact, she broke down shortly after she set the record and had to stop at Peterborough. Nevertheless, this huge trackside sign marks the precise location where steam history was made and remains unbeaten to this day. Back in York, one man has more reason than most to celebrate today's reunion. Andrew Goodman brought Dwight D. Eisenhower over here from a museum in the US and Dominion of Canada from one in Montreal an operation masterminded from a large shed near Sutton Coalfield, the headquarters of Moorwright International. Dwight the Eisenhower, they'd built the building round it, so it had always been thought that the loco could never be got out of the building, but uh, we went along and had a little look and, uh, and came up with a cunning plan, traverse it sidewards and, and taken across to the far side of the museum where there was a doorway to extract it from. Dominion Academy was a lot easier actually. That was in a conventional building, there was uh, a doorway to it. Uh, that was quite straightforward by comparison. We had to load the loco and the tender onto railway flat cars and then move them by rail to the port of Halifax in Nova Scotia. And then we put them onto a ship like a large commercial ferry and that came back to Liverpool with them. And then it was a road journey from Liverpool to York. It will be nice to see the six together again. And um, I think we played a, a fairly significant part in it. Steam enthusiasts have waited decades for this day. Some believed it would never happen. Peter Green discovered trains when he was still in short trousers. Now aged 70, the Coventry grandfather photographed locos all over the Midlands, including the last steam trains to leave Nuneaton in the late 1960s. Six A4s together, you know, so good to see. And, you know, all, all the time, I never actually saw them that much, but to see them all together now, absolutely marvellous occasion and our own transport correspondent, Keith Wilkinson, here on a day off. As a lad, he spent hours roaming the loco sheds and sidings in his native Lancashire, armed with a box brownie camera. Seeing this again, Nigel Gresley, for instance, absolutely fantastic. I remember seeing it as a schoolboy, age 10, hurtling along, made my hair stand on end. A year later, steam disappeared from British Rail, and the headmaster wrote on my report, Keith has run out of steam. Well, not today, it's back. The current world record was set by France's TGV train in April 2007, 357 miles an hour, more than twice as fast as Mallard. The super trains of Europe and the Far East may have the speed, but even 75 years on, when it comes to pure style, these beauties are still way out in front. Andy Bevan, ITV News.